So this is this is sort of a state of the world on network indexing um, and and store the index. So this is a little bit higher level than what Andrew gave in the lightning talk earlier today, uh, and is also a little bit more forward looking at sort of current paths that we're that we're thinking about. Um, so in particular, we've got a problem of scaling content routing. We've got store the index as a current thing that's doing this. Uh, we can talk about where we want to go, what interfaces we've put in place, uh, and how we're thinking about evolving them, and, and where we're heading, and the things that we don't know how to do. Um, so right now, um, this is a problem that we brought up a few times. I'm going to be quick about this part. Um, when you look at the Hydra, it's got two to four billion records, um, 20,000 to 40,000 peers. That means it's asking for about four megs of routing resources per peer right now. Um, when we look at our network, at store the index, we've got on the order of eight billion records, um, which are coming from, right, like you think about Filecoin as like maybe a thousand-ish miners or storage providers that are, that are producing that. Um, so we've got a scale issue here, which is the amount of content is growing a lot faster than the number of peers. Um, and so that's sort of like one of these fundamental short-term things of this DHT model of just scaling the content with the peers. Um, we, can't, we can't just have a homogenous pool of peers. We need to make use of the heterogeneity in resources. And the current DHT stuff uh, has some security things that you run into uh, around Sybils uh, and sort of resist resiliency uh, if you try and make a heterogeneous DHT, right? If, if someone can claim an arbitrary portion of the DHT space, it becomes very trivial for them to do bad things to your DHT. Um, so we've got a couple things that we've, I think, uh, become somewhat opinionated about in terms of what we need to make this problem tractable. Um, one is that we think that it's pretty important for the index providers, the, the producers of content, to have an ongoing interface where they sort of say, this is the content that I have, and that stays accessible. Like, they're responsible for, like, tracking that and being able to have that get pulled by the network. Um, and so rather than them just saying, like, hey, I've got this SID as these one-off messages, they need to, like, remember those SIDs that they've said and that string of advertisements and be able to have multiple people ask them about that. Um, and so that gives them accountability, which is like, you can't go and tell one guy I've got this in and then give a different manifest to someone else. Um, because if we want to have any sort of reputation of like, you know, you really then need to actually serve that content that you're claiming, we need to sort of have this ability to hold, hold them accountable. And it also is an interface that allows for multiple competing indexing systems uh, to both pull, right? Like that content is now available and it's not just been pushed into one network system, but rather another networking system that's trying something different can also pull that content. Um, so that that came up with this structure that we're using uh, in sort of the index. Um, the, anyone who's producing content that they want to make indexed uh, creates a chain of advertisements. The advertisements are signed. Each advertisement has a bunch of uh, SIDs that it points to or multi-hashes. Um, we have the index provider uh, sort of put out when they're like uh, a proactive ping when there is new data available. Um, that helps with lower latency because it's, it, it sort of gives a, hey, there's an update available. And then the indexers are fetching the delta of what they don't have yet. So they go back until the previous thing and that allows them to not get overwhelmed. Um, so if, if, if we end up with, as, with less headroom and we can't just respond to every ping, we've got a sort of a graceful degradation where we can collapse and, and do these fetches of multiple advertisements at a time. Um, and so in particular, you know, if someone is creating new advertisements every second and we decide that that's really quite often, uh, it's on the indexer side to tune that down and say, actually, we're gonna, we're gonna pull every 10 seconds or every minute and, and get sort of that, that content. Um, so where we are now, um, so these are, these are sort of some distributions of how large uh, the number of entries that we're seeing uh, per advertisement and then how long these advertisement chains are growing. Um, so we're seeing advertisement chain depth. So this is like the, the number of advertisements that providers are doing. Um, they vary. We're seeing a lot of them, which we think are most of the Filecoin ones, in the, in the range of 10,000 to 
50,000, right? Like corresponding to these deals, right? Like if you've got 10,000 deals, that's like a lot of terabytes of data. Um, and then at the high end, you've got like some, I don't know, getting into orders of millions and that's someone like NFT storage that I'm just gonna keep staring at through a lot of this talk. <laughs> as, as the, you're, you're right on this edge of the uh, storage provider uh, range of what indexes look like. Uh, and then the, the core, the, the sort of counterpoint is the, the number of entries in those. And so what we're seeing is again, this, the, the sort of the big jump area, which is like this bulk of Filecoin deals is that you've got uh, between 32,000 and half a million SIDs in one of those 32 day blocks, right? And that's, that's about what we expect the, a block size to be, right? If, if, you're, if you're pushing in files and they're getting to be a meg or two meg blocks for a lot of that, then in your 32 gigs, you're gonna end up with under half a million SIDs. Um, and then you've got uh, a few that are, you know, getting up to up to that like million-ish where it's like Filecoin state tree and a lot of really small blocks. Um, and then you've got a few that are really small where it's, it's this trickle of data. Um, but the trickle of data, there's very few providers that are doing that. So this is per provider. So we're not like, if we, if we counted the number of advertisements that had small numbers, there would be a lot of the small numbers ones, but they're coming from relatively few providers, uh, I think is the way to read this. Um, okay, so where are we going? Well, right now, like in terms of like this year, I think the goal is like, let's get it pretty fast and like pretty reliable. Um, we're not there yet. Uh, I think we're doing pretty well on our, on both of these numbers. It, and it's a matter of activating enough of the network to be able to say that we're actually doing this. So when we look at store the index itself, um, most of our lookups, like at the point that you get your HTTP query to us or your network query to us, we get a response out in about one millisecond, pretty much all the time. So we're reasonably happy with that. Um, and then the question is like, how much of the time do you hit us and how long does it take? Um, for, for things like Hydra, we're under 100 milliseconds. I think in order to get to having IPFS gateways match this sort of target, we're going to need replication. So we're going to need at least regional replicas and we're going to need reframe operations hookup where we're not going through hydras. Um, so that's sort of the, how we get to, to this for IPFS. And then it's gonna be, what are the other sort of clients and ingresses where we need to reach this? Um, this is sort of going to, to, to Juan's point about pushing stuff further, right? Which is great, we can say we're gonna do three or, or like a set of regional replicas. And that's at this level going to get us under hundred milliseconds. Um, to get down to 10 milliseconds or something like that, we need to actually care that there's like, there's a lot of data centers in Iceland. And if we just say, great, like AWS gives us what, like 20 regions or something, that's not getting to the, the 10 different data center uh, places where there's servers in Iceland. Um, I think one of the things that we are likely going to do is add a cache level as well as the full store of the index. Um, that's a more realistic thing to try and push with uh, gateways and with edges. And essentially the thought there is there's a lot of data that's never getting requested. Um, and so if we can just have a cache that anytime anything actually gets asked for, just keeps it. But if it doesn't have it, it falls back the first time uh, at least. Um, that'll be a few orders of magnitude smaller probably. Um, and Content that gets asked for once, maybe we're okay with that being a little bit slower than content that has been asked for before in the region. Um, so that's that's sort of like the next plan. That doesn't get us into these, this edge yet. Um, I think that's gonna be this incentive problem. Like that's not something we're gonna try and talk to all the data centers, um, but but I think that's, that's sort of like this. Um, where, where we would like to go. Um, I think, I think there is a question of like, should we be pre-caching to IPFS hosts? Um, like, is, is, that, is that cache thing where we are just doing it when we get a request enough or do we need to have pre-built those caches and push them in advance? Because if I'm going even to regions, there's something that's hotter than what someone has asked for it in this region. Like, there, there is a set of content that we know when you spin up a new replica, it is going to get asked for. And so we should like proactively push that. That shouldn't purely be on demand, 
like, oh, you got unlucky because your node restarted. And so the really popular like front page of the New York Times, you have to fall back. Like we, we can push a bunch of that stuff in already. And so we have to identify what is this uh, head of content routing stuff and get that packaged as an even smaller subset that is, that is proactively pushed. Um, so that, that's gonna be harder, but, but seems like there's a tractable problem in there. So, so this is gonna be scoping down a little bit. On, on replication, the stuff we're working on right now, we wanna be able to spin up new instances pretty quickly, um, where the critical factor for how long it takes to spin up a new replica is like what bandwidth that node has, like how fast can it pull down three terabytes of data. Like it's gonna be hard to get around that, um, but it shouldn't be, oh, there's this storage provider that has data that we care about, but it's really slow. And so everyone who's starting up has to wait and repull the data from that storage provider. So we need to get it so that uh, the data ha doesn't have to only come from the sort of authoritative origin, but rather we can have archive snapshots that also, because this data is signed, like I don't need to get it from there. I can just like go back to content routing and get the data from a file coin backup or from a car or something. Um, we need to be a little careful that we don't cause infinite loops of infinite content routing in doing that. Um, we're, we sort of already realized that if this goes into SIDS, then those become provided and we just sort of make our lives harder. Um, and we would like instances to be eventually consistent um, so that uh, if we, if things did pause, like there would be sort of an even place. Like right now, um, provider sets do not always stay equivalent uh, enough that we're sort of like confident that we have consistency. We'd like to move towards stable snapshots. Um, and sort of, and then as we finish this replication work right now, the next thing that we're sort of starting to stare at in scope is how we get the uh, instances of either sort of the index or these large caches uh, near the gateways and, and make the gateway case work well. There's a couple other things that I think I'm gonna throw in this replication heading that, that we haven't like necessarily, I think, said we're, when we're gonna take on, but that we're thinking about. Um, one is this consensus problem. And in particular, one of the things we might do short term is like, should there be a daily like consensus snapshot of what the index is for this day or every six hours or something, right? That, that's not the every SID is the consensus, but if you've got a stable snapshot where there is an agreement of like what is the correct index in for today or for the six hours or something, um, now you've got accountability for the indexing system, uh, which is like this indexer did not answer correctly against the snapshot that had it. And so you can start to penalize indexers that are wrong. Um, because you know what correct is, and that's a nice thing to have. Um, and, and it is probably useful for some of the privacy things. Uh, so so it, it likely is either privacy or a reputation thing that drives needing to do this or wanting to do this. Um, and then the other one is like how much of this uh, caching and proactive replication we, we want to sort of throw in. Um, like we'll probably have a cache that is on demand fallback but the do we figure out hot content to proactively push is gonna be another one that we need to figure out as a performance thing. For scaling, um, we're working on checkpoints as Andrew alluded to. Uh, we want to not need to uh, replay of full historical chains. Uh, and in particular, uh, for cases like NFT storage where it's a really long chain, um, it would be really nice to just have like a snapshot of all the content currently that can be re-aggregated and it's as much to allow them to not have to store all of that previous historical data um, as it is. Uh, we've caught up, um, but the next guy hasn't. So like there, there's reasons to like have that rebundled for more efficiency. Um, we think we will at some point need to shard our ingest layer. Um, and so this is as we fetch from providers right now, that's, you know, we have a centralized node that's doing that. And as the number of providers expands, we'll probably want multiple nodes that are taking different subsets and then combine them. So that part probably splits up as the number of overall providers grows. Um, so figuring out exactly how that then goes into a single index. Um, there's a question around performance uh, here, which is what is the need for a low latency pipeline from content that's newly published to being accessed? And is that all one system? Which is, <coughs> could we have a different streaming system for the first six hours? that has maybe less consistency guarantees and then content that's available in the next snapshot 
goes into sort of this main indexing system that's got a more map reduce periodic feel versus a streaming uh, behavior for a much smaller but very churny amount of fresh content. Um, those may be different systems depending on, on where we end up. Um, right, like if I've got new content that's newly available, I might want to push it out and it may be in some temporary cache and it may not get the same consistency guarantees until it gets put into a consensus. Um, uh, and then it's also going to like the, the, the thing will get bigger. We'll have to figure out like does it end up on across multiple disks? Like we can already sort of handle this. We've got a lot of files. Like it's easy enough to mount this across multiple disks, um, but we need to figure out what sort of sharding a data center will, or a rack will actually want to feel comfortable with those deployments as we get there. I think we're fine for a while though. Like a ZFS pool will keep us going. I think it's really more as, as we get higher query volume, we need to figure out is the answer more replicas or is the answer like, well, here it is, and we've got lots of readers that can like independently access the same copy. Like, there may be data center cases where you do want the efficiency of just having that copy on fast storage, and you can have multiple compute nodes accessing it, um, and that would be sort of the the sharding case, or or the multiple readers uh, over one instance. And then we've got some trust stuff. Um, we're not working on any of that right now, but the things that are sort of like on the horizon is figuring out. Uh, signing and authenticity of records. So in the reframe um, provider spec, we're trying to say we should start signing the records that we're publishing. Uh, the current index providers are already doing this, so like let's, let's keep that ball rolling. Um, and then we have some questions about should we be uh, blinding or hashing or adding privacy uh, in here and what does that look like? Um, so immediate ones that we're likely to deal with at some point, we may have some malicious replicas how do we deal with those? Um, do, do clients cross compare from like different replicas that they can see and like make sure that they're not just being like given bad data? Um, there's some latency trade-offs there and some like excessive bandwidth stuff in, in, in the making that the client's problem. Um, but as you get to trustless, you, you either are doing some crypto stuff or you're, you're making it the client's problem. So, um, and then, uh, there's also a feedback loop of like, how do the clients find the right ones? And so in the short term, that may be some sort of gossip-based discovery of, of these things in a permissionless world, um, or we may do some sort of consensus-based routing table of what are the ones out there. Um, I'm less worried about clients finding the fastest one. I think that we already have enough like IP geolocation type databases that it's pretty easy for a client to make pretty good guesses about, like given a list of multi-addresses, you can probably find the ones that are fast, closest to you um, with, with reasonable precision. And then if you can keep some state of ones that have worked well previously, like that plus your general IP map is, is probably going to do pretty well. Some things we don't know how to do. Um, this first one goes back to the DHT. Like if we've got heterogeneous data that's being provided, can we, can we safely make use of that with a bunch of efficiencies? So these, this heterogeneous DHT type world, like could we have the Filecoin storage providers provide you know, terabyte per storage provider of indexing stuff into the IPFS DHT and feel like it was still a permissionless DHT? Or would we need incentives and stake and then it's less of a permissionless DHT in some sense? Um, where do we root our notion of consensus of correctness uh, in in an in index snapshot if we do that, um, and and what 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 is that baseline? Um, who learns what? Do we do we add limits to information leakage, and and are we going to feel like we can do that sufficiently efficiently that it makes sense, uh, or is there going to be sort of a tension there that we need to worry about? Um, and then what does the distribution of these indexes look like? So. Do we, do we need some sort of CDN-like thing to store these archives and the Filecoin data so that we can spin up indexes quickly or spin up index replicas quickly? Uh, and then what is the right cache that we would be proactively pushing at different levels? There's a website, sid.contact. This morning, the firewall here didn't like it. I think we complained to them, uh, and it works now. There's also stored the index on Filecoin Slack. Um, and then... The uh, research open problems, there is a, an open problem uh, around privacy stuff 
and private retrieval for, that includes content routing uh, that we'll talk more about tomorrow. All right, happy to take questions. Uh, what does a team need help with? Um, I think more integration. Like there's, there's two sides. Like there's, there's an ecosystem thing here and there's only so many of those links that we can build. So the more proactive, like if, if you are building this, like either have that open source, have it generalizable, help us with docs, tell us where things don't make sense um, so that the next people who are also doing those links can do it faster um, because getting more clients and more providers is what makes this sort of gain momentum and succeed.